Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our next interview. And thank you to our sponsor, Cloud Edu. Analyzing big data to improve security and educational quality. Our moderator for this interview is Rion van der Berg, Education Technology Manager from FedSAS. And our speaker, Alistair Payne, Chief Executive Officer from Cloud Edu. Over to our speakers. Good afternoon to our audience. Welcome, Alistair. It's good to see you again. I think Thank you, Manir. Good to see you too. We've seen each other so many times at these <laughs> events. Uh, unfortunately, today, not in person, but uh, yeah, good to have you uh, on the panel today. We're talking big data analytics and security, um, something that's very much front of mind. And uh, you're presenting a session uh, with the title, Analyzing Big Data to Improve Security and educational quality. Now that's already a, a mouthful. Big data <laughs> is very, very intimidating. Uh, it's, it's, it's a term which has been used a lot lately. Uh, maybe people's understanding of the term varies. Uh, how big must it be to be big, to be big data? But, but what would you consider to be big data? Just, just set the scene for us. How sure. would you define big data? Sure. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ren. Really appreciate uh, being here this afternoon. You know, after having 20 years in education and been running Cloud EDU for the last eight years, I'm, I'm not sure whether I would ever have plotted out a path where I was speaking about big data. But yet here we stand and big data is a, is a really key term within education. Um, so, so really good question and I think a good starting point. You know, we need to define what we're going to be speaking about this afternoon. And the reality is when it comes to big data that the, the term has morphed over the years. And to be fair, it's been part of the part of that reasoning has been because our understanding of data and the size of data has, has certainly changed. Um, essentially, for me, big data is broken down into the three V's. It's broken down into volume, velocity, and a variety. So volume really just speaks to the sheer size of the data. You know, those small attachments that we put on our email or the, you know, the movie that we download or the, or, or the Netflix movie that we watch, that really is just a small drop in the bucket of the ocean of data that we, we're talking about when we're talking about big data. So to try and put into perspective, certainly from a volume perspective, they say that every single human being on the planet generates about 1.7 megabytes of data every second of every single day. That works out to be about 2.5 quintillion uh, data bytes daily. This sounds like this, this stuff is actually so big, Rian, we actually can't wrap our heads around it. The universe uh, is billions and billions. Of <laughs> exactly. But I think what, what it has been apparent is our shift where we've spoken about megabytes to gigabytes. Nowadays, institutions, universities, schools are talking about terabytes and petabytes of data. So, so from, certainly from a volume perspective, huge amounts of data. Velocity really speaks to about how fast that data is coming in, the speed at which it's coming in. Uh, you know, some of that data could be real time, some of that data could be coming in fits and starts, but velocity is that speed, that ever increasing speed at which it's happening. And we, we speak about real time, it's, as it's happening, we want that data at, at our fingertips. And the third is variety. So. You know, once upon a time, we, we spoke about, once upon a time, uh, we spoke about data coming in in certain formats, an Excel spreadsheet, a CSV, uh, an access database. Nowadays, we just have a sort of a tsunami of unstructured data where that was structured. So non-traditional forms like video, text, social media postings, geolocation, all of these things are big data. Um, I thought what would be helpful if, if I put some meat on the bones of big data and actually give you a practical example. And... The best one I could come up with is I went and grabbed a till slip from my wallet and I looked at that and I said, okay, so what data is on your till slip? And you can, you can grab any till slip from your wallet. So we're not probably do, doing it right now. This was uh, my, wife. Yeah, my wife and I going out to a meal, but the person who serves me, the name of the organization, the time, exact time and date, who is covered, the line items of what is on the menu. And it was a very delicious meal as well. How much, how much it costs, eat what each item costs. Um, and in this one, it actually goes down to the, the, the actual machine that was, uh, was printed. So that's a really good example of big data, or certainly the start of it, because then if you take that and you then multiply that by the number of transactions that are happening across South Africa, online, in-person shopping, all these big shopping centers that we've got, then you start to get a concept of what that big data is. Okay, so... And here comes the critical part about big data, because it's not just about the storage, but it's, it's kind of what we do with it. 
So what is a what does that tool slip allow me to do? What does that data around it allow me to do? It allows me to drill in and see what type of sales so that I can try and start predicting the future to get ahead of my customer. That's one. But the other is also to look at and mitigate and, and, and reduce risk. So if you think about, again, in shopping terms, you don't want to go and buy a whole bunch of items in stock that no one is ever going to purchase. And that is really about big data. It's about analyzing that information at your fingertips to make really key decisions. Uh, today, I think we're going to be speaking about really about security and how big data informs those kinds of decisions. So, sorry, long, long-winded, but hopefully it makes sense. Yeah, so there's, there's data, there's big data or even bigger data. There's the intrinsic issues, metadata, what comes with it that's possibly not direct. But we're talking big data, security, or analytics and security, and then education. So education is generating a lot of uh, data as well. So all of the data is being collected. We're on a Google Meet, uh, whatever online call we're doing, video conference. But so what? Uh, What are we learning? Why is it important? Uh, How can we get the value from the tool slip into our business, into our security space, into our education space. Uh, How how can it inform decision-making at institutions? Right. Well, so I think the first thing you've got to kind of ask is say, what what sort of big data is being collected? What, what, What databases can I draw from? And I think probably the first, and again, we're going to say during COVID, you know, the pendulum has swung, things have changed. And that really is probably the biggest understatement. But you know, when, when COVID descended upon us, um, it, it really changed the way we interact. And, and the video conferencing tool, the, the one that we're using right now, became absolutely critical to everything that we did. You know, um, Google said during the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic, they were doing 2 billion minutes of video conferencing per day. Wow. So for me, big data and education, certainly number one has been, what is the quality of that video call been like? How can I, and and IT managers were pulled very quickly into a position where they were being asked to report back on on quality and um, what what was the security around it? So for me, that has been one of the, certainly the question number one in education is, is around that video quality data. So um, a, a, probably a good time for me to jump into a practical example of this. Um, as, as you've quite rightly said, you mentioned Google Meets, I have as well. Google, we, at CloudEDU, we're Google specialists. Um, and so the information that is saved around the Google Meet side of things has been critical to us. Google has provided an incredible tool, which they call the Google Meet Quality Tool. Now, this particular one kept the data for 30 days, but all of those huge interactions that were taking place Alistair, we lost we lost your video of your sound a little bit. Can you just beef up the? Oh, absolutely. How's that? My technology has been have that's been misbehaving good. on me today, Rian. It's been uh, dropping its sound, so hopefully that's all right. Um, so that that particular data s- or, or tool that you're looking at now is called the Google Meets Quality Tool, and all of the video data is being captured and being aggregated so that you can get get something useful out of it. That's really the important thing about big data. So right along the top there, and this is a training domain. Uh, we do a lot of training on here, so there's not a huge amount of data, but very quickly it brings up the, the average time that your organization is spending on video conference calls, the number of meetings, and then three great technical ways of being able to look at um, network congestion, packet loss, and jitter. So these speak to the quality of it. And again, these are little bits, lots of information being collected that, that Google is aggregating for us. So here we go. Here's an ongoing I'm actually going to go as an example for you to go back to one from 21 days ago. Alistair, we, we lost some sound again. Thanks, Rian. I'm not sure why that's happening, but it's it's uh, the gremlins in my system. Um, but there we go. There's, there's um, 46 p- people in that particular call. Uh, that's a Google Meet. And we're going to drill down into that Google Meet to have a look at some of the data that's in there. So automatically on the left-hand side, we have a start time, we have an end time, and then we have the timeline of the Google Meet call that took place. And immediately it just shows me a couple of the participants, the main participants, but I can actually go show, show more and see all of the participants. How much, when they joined the call, their start point, when did they leave the call, their end point, how much time did they spend on the call, 
So that's a really great way to start to ask the question around engagement. How engaged were my students as this lecture was uh, taking place? That's not the only thing. It also shows if screen sharing took place, uh, if you're on the Google Workspace for Education Plus Edition, which has polling and Q&A and breakout rooms, give you information about those. Um, and then below that, so the first one is, you know, kind of giving me some sort of snapshot on engagement. Below that, it gives me a breakdown of the network. Um, this is a great one because, again, invariably you have one person reporting, hey, my, the video call, call, call quality wasn't good, what information is available, and I get even things like the CPU usage. So if your CPU usage is too high, just a great tool for being able to identify problems um, and be able to get feedback. Uh, another key critical question that many organizations and institutions, particularly universities, are asking is they're wanting to enlarge their class sizes. They're wanting to create more online learning opportunities for students, particularly in rural areas. And they're asking questions around how much data is being utilized uh, by students, how much data is being generated, what, how much data will they need for that particular lecture, what's the cost going to be. And Google, again, give you a complete breakdown on what's the, the kilobit rate for the video, the, sorry, in this case, the audio, for the video and for the screen sharing. So that's just one of the skills, the tool sets that Google has where it's opened up this huge amount of data uh, for, for you to have a good look at. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. I think one of, one of the biggest challenges were not necessarily can we go online, but do we have the infrastructure or the um, coverage and then data cost, different data, the actual vehicle of data. So I think this can help a lot in understanding your solution that you yeah. deploy. So and, the, and the great thing is, Rian, is once, once you've answered that question and you said, okay, I know how much data is being utilized, Google then have a, a policy tool set where you can reduce students' audio usage or video usage and put them on a lower quality, not great for the student maybe, but it uses a lot less data. So you get to be able to dictate those policies. Yeah, and then saving. If, you, if you're sponsoring the students or the student is paying itself, slightly lower quality is okay if I can afford that yeah. rather than having nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so conferencing is one element of big data that we generate and that we find engagement with and that Google is measuring. But I think one of the biggest security risks that we see in organizations um, and where a lot of data is being generated in the background is, is that of email. Tons and tons of data. Um, large universities, large institutions, uh, a significant security concern. We all have been asked <laughs> to pay in Bitcoin somewhere. Uh, receiving <laughs> yeah. email, spam, phishing, uh, non-malicious uh, mistakes being made, sending of inappropriate mails. These are serious concerns that give a lot of um, right. IT guys uh, some, some headaches, some gray hair. Uh, how, how, how can these issues be triaged? How can we pinpoint yeah. where yeah. to aim and, and fire so that we secure our institutions? Yeah. So, I mean, listen, there's always been a debate is does email classify as big data? And the reality is certainly based on, on the staggering volume of email. Email hasn't gone anywhere. The staggering volume of, of email that goes out, it, it does very, fall very much under big data, very much unstructured. But it really is, you know, it's a, it's a transport mechanism at the end of the day, but we are attaching items to it. We are communicating, we're engaging in, in varying different ways. Um, you know, I think at one point, they said 50% of the world's email is spam. It used to be a lot higher than that. And by 2014, it was up near 70%. We've implemented some excellent good practices in email and been able to wrestle that big data. So we've got it down near 50%. Um, but again, Google provide an incredible tool set for you to be able to identify and triage. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to do the curse of uh, all good demo for you but hopefully it'll, it'll you know show you the, 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 the power and the and as you do that your sound goes <laughs> yeah, exactly uh... thanks Ryan. every time my sound goes down just stick a finger in there i can see you quite clearly I, then i don't know why that's happening it's down again <laughs> oh my goodness me okay i'll try and keep an eye on that um so here we go here's a good example um of an email an errant email i'm actually just going to pick one from my email inbox this one happens to come from a it's a marketing email they're not uh inappropriate in any way but make you make the assumption that it's inappropriate in some way every single email inside your system 
has what we call a message ID. So I can go and click on the three little dots there and go to show original. I've done that already. There is my message ID. I'm going to copy that. Uh, I can actually just show you. I'm going to right click and copy that. I'm then going to jump across to uh, my Google investigation tool. So firstly, they provide a, Google provides a fantastic um, ad admin console. There are a number of what we call log files, which are just huge files that contain all of those interactions. They're, they're the big data files. Google has about 10 of those that they save up to 180 days. So up to six months, they keep those files for you to be able to look at. The dashboard gives you a beautiful graphical representation of potential issues, but we're going to use the investigation tool to drill, drill down and show you the power of, um, of Google and big data. So here we have uh, Google Messages. I'm going to go and select a Google message by its message ID. I'm going to paste the message ID in there. Now, for those of you that have worked with this size of data before, you'll know that a search of this magnitude may take several hours uh, to be accurate, to go across millions of mails across your entire system. We're going to see how long Google will take to do that. And uh, it's done. So in under three seconds, Google is able to search through all of your data and identify that inappropriate email. Now, that speed of search is critical to security. Imagine an inappropriate email gone out to a number of your users and you want to be, be able to react before they've read it. Now that I have uh, got the email or identified the email, so to speak, there are several uh, actions that I can do against that email. And for dramatic effect, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that email. So I'll just need to type in there, delete one message. There we go. And it will now go through each and every single one of my users and it will go ahead and delete that particular email. This is normally where the technology falls over and it's not quite as fast as it should be, but there's the email over there. I'm going to go refresh my page. I'm actually going to refresh it totally just to force it a little bit. And it's gone from my system. So within a couple of seconds, <laughs> like the speed at which this is happening is staggering, folks. And like, this is for all the users. This is for all the users. Yep. So, yep. okay, whoops, I made a mistake. I need to go jump back in. I want to go and restore that message. It's actually not deleted. It's kept in quarantine for me. I'm going to go ahead and restore that message. And within a couple of seconds, again, I'm probably tempting fate here. Oh, there we go. It's back in everybody's inbox. Alistair, we're running out of serious time. It's, it's, it's super interesting because I think this is practical for an IT manager to manage the risk. Um, yep. Institutions are facing... One of the biggest risks would probably be not just practical, operational, but reputational risk. It's not been tested in many courts, but but do we have tools available that can assist in, in about 30 seconds? Because then I want to make a closing remark and get you to, but what are the- I'm Yeah, yeah what, so- What are the tools uh, for reputation? I'll try and be as quick as possible, but uh, one of those would be um, something like an inappropriate or an illegal file that's been downloaded onto your system. In this particular one, we're going to look through and find all the video files on our system. So all of that data that's being stored, we're going to go and search for it. And you will notice that within a couple of seconds, it's going to come back with, in this case, I have spoofed it a little bit, but here we go. You can see that there's uh, some illegal right. movies that have been downloaded. Again, I'm able to highlight them and do a number of actions against them, like disable, download, print, and remove users. That wasn't 30 seconds, but again, I'm getting the message that we that we uh, should start closing. It's it's really fascinating. Last comment: Should we just sit back and be fearful of big data, or can we do something intentionally? Thank you for your session, but what's your answer? Uh, you can't sit back. We don't have the, we don't have the uh, the we don't we don't have the the, the, the pleasure of being able to sit back um, and, and be able to just say we can't do anything about it. Sticking our head in the sand is not appropriate. Uh, Google and in particular Workspace had these tool sets that I'm able to search and, and triage my mail. In many cases, it's about getting the right information. And in some cases, it's just about getting uh, the right tool set at our fingertips. So that's from us. Thank you very much indeed. If you want more information, info at cloudedu.co.za. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to speak to you more about some of the Google Workspace for Education Plus editions. Uh, and the tool sets investigation tool that's there available for us.
Alistair, thanks so much for sharing with us. Have a great day, everybody. And yeah, let's, let's go manage our big data. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and for that presentation. Thank you again to our sponsor, Cloud Edu. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for the next presentation. Thank you.